Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Thursday, July 11th, 2019. Uh, we're getting into the uh, summer doldrums here. Well, we're well into that now. You know, vol volatility is abated, and uh, I'm going to get to the charts here in a second. There's not a lot to report, and on that, I may cut back to doing the uh, the weekly market wraps. Uh, maybe three times a week or every other day, depending on what happens. There's there's not a lot to report today, but on that note, let me let me mention this particularly for the YouTubers, um, and I say this often, but uh, I, it bears repeating that. Um, you know the stock market and stock market analysis is a small part of what I trade and what I do. Um, you know, in other words, and I've said this before, uh, the only way to beat the market that I know of, the only way that the professional money managers, the hedge funds, those that do outperform the index funds, and there are those, you know, those that do, they don't do it by trading the market. None that I know of sit there and trade the ES or the S&P 500 uh, futures or SPY to beat the market. They do it by superior security selection, asset allocation, and diversification. And so the point is, um, the market continues to grind higher. I'm going to get to the charts in a second. Um, but I wanted to use this example I used on the site today. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, we, we had an official trade idea on the site. Recently, we, we ran up, caught most of this move off the bottom, um, hit that well well into the double-digit gain. And then in yesterday's update, and this is one of many things I covered, trade ideas. You know, a lot of what I've been trading uh, in the last few months throughout this year, uh, other than, you know, many things, Treasury bonds, corporate bonds, uh, a lot of commodities, particularly the ag commodities, natural gas, oil, long and short. There's been trending, plenty of trading opportunities. Um, but, you know, I'll continue on the YouTube channel. The, you know, free content as well as a site will include general stock market analysis. And the reason that's free content, um, you know, my analysis can be spot on at times on the market and sometimes I can't get out of my own way, it seems. And that's because it, for me, it's a lot easier to f call the direction on a single security such as a commodity or a single stock than it is to to figure out where 500 stocks are going in and, and that's the S&P 500 for example you have 500 companies in many different sectors at any given day some are going up some are going down uh, Russell 2000 you have 2000 companies now don't get me wrong the indexes do trade off technicals and you can course you apply technical analysis same premise you use for these but uh, the example I used today you know this yesterday I mentioned wheat is a pullback here to that support level and again uh, on the charts I'm watching today this morning mentioned uh, on the wheat futures an objective long entry and from there you know wheat popped uh, three and a quarter percent today which is about exactly how much the stock market the S&P 500 has gained over the past month so for those that say wow oh, this is a resilient bull trend shorts are getting crushed stock market's gone up in a month what you know one of several trade ideas and that's just one of many uh, you know yesterday we uh, you know in the trading room we had uh, you know trade on what was it CBDS uh, for a quick 14 percent gain and that wasn't just a gain for the day from the where we took it on the breakout there above the wedge hit that level so it's probably my good chance to get a pullback target right here uh, to the uh, to back uh, back test the trend line which we did uh, on this one I'll tell you and then usually I don't cover the official trade ideas or unofficial on the on the public videos but uh, I'm, I'm gonna sit tight I'm not I'm not recycling back into this one on the pullback it could pop there it's certainly an objective entry that's where it closed today but point being that was 14 percent in a day you know wheat was three and a half uh, on the charts I'm watching today uh, along there's the wheat futures chart showing you the you know it's an objective entry uh, no buy signals, but we we have, we're coming up on support, so anywhere from there, minimal downside, and it's going to do one of two things, and it certainly did that. So wheat futures took off today. Uh, Nat gas was another one, been long and bullish this one for a while, and said, you know, hey, it's time that it, uh, looks like time to raise stops. We're probably going to get a correction. We're coming up to resistance on that gas, and you can also do a short trade. I mentioned uh, using. Uh, if you don't trade futures on a break of this small rising wedge here, uh, you could use uh, D gas, which is the inverse three time leverage. And that was good from the breakdown there. My target was hit, first target where the arrow breaks are 390 right there, uh, about exactly what we hit today at the lows on that gas. So that was good for a quick 
eight percent day trade on D gas, and again also for a you know a reversal to get out of the long position. So uh, you know eight percent on D gas today, three and a quarter on on wheat. And these are just again things that uh, you can make in a day uh, with the market, especially in low volatility. Uh, when the market's just grind, whether it's grinding higher, you usually don't see the market grind lower. That's the good thing about shorting, and that's why I like it. When the market finally drops and goes to a downtrend, uh, as the charts will show us here in a second, uh, stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise. So, uh, all right, we'll get to the uh, let's 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 go ahead and dive into the charts. Let's do that now. Uh, go back here. Go back to spy. Start there today on the spy 60-minute chart. And that's it. Here's that slow grinding, like I said, you know, from where we are today, you go back to where we were, um, you know, a while back, all the way back here. Yeah, all the way back here is about, actually, that's, uh, what is that, two and a half months. And we're still up, uh, in that case, about one, <laughs> one and a half percent. So I, I actually underestimated when I said a month. So there it is. The market's you know, inching higher, uh, but nobody's getting rich quick in there. Uh, right now, breakdown, back test of the wedge like we had the other day, but we're not rolling down yet. Um, I made some comments on the on the site today, and I'll share this with public members. I see three likely or three, you know, uh, yeah, three pretty clear scenarios going on right now in the stock market. Um, one of those uh, is, I'll tell you, my preferred scenario is that uh, fundamentals most certainly do matter. There's been a clear deterioration in, in uh, economic indicators and fundamentals recently, and that's, of course, what Jay Powell cited with his uber dovish statements. And by the way, the Wall Street Journal, I mentioned that yesterday, that when I heard those statements, they couldn't have possibly been any more bearish. Wall Street Journal came out today and said that was a, the Fed minutes, the most recent minutes released, were the most bearish in years. And they cited actual you know statistics. They used charts. They look at keywords in those statements. So it wasn't just my interpretation. It was full blown. That's as dovish as you get. Now, where am I going with that is uh, what happened is the, the breakout in the markets on that you couldn't have possibly had any more dovish uh, comments from him yesterday, uh, pretty much sealing the deal for a uh, rate cut later this month. The odds for a you know 50%, even another 50 basis points, the following month increased as well. Uh, and what you had is a fairly lackluster breakout. You made a marginal new high in the S&P 500 and QQQ. I will say this: price to me comes first and foremost. Volume is a distant second, and this market is known for a lot of live, low volume, just grind higher. So uh, I want to say a breakout is a breakout until unless fails. So we'll give it that. You can't. I'm not going to say it's bearish because we didn't have a very high volume. It was not bad volume. It just wasn't a very high volume. You can see the volume bars down here, and again, there's a back test there. So very lackluster. Let's just say an un very very unimpulsive breakout, um, which is somewhat of it's a sign of non-confirmation, but. It Again, that isn't a, sh a sell signal, and it's not bearish. It's just, again, not, not it's not a confirming breakout. It's not impulsive. And on QQQ, same story there. In fact, uh, we're down today. So QQQ, let's zero in on this chart. Uh, we have this 191, we'll call it 50-ish level, uh, pretty important level. Take the lines away. I'll show you that. Uh, I've talked on this recently. You know, we had a series of highs right here where the market, these were the highs in QQQ and it failed. It, multiple attempts, it couldn't get through and we had that big correction down into the June lows. We came back, we failed there again a couple times and we broke out. But again, uh, it's a breakout. So you got to give, you know, the, the bulls points for that as long as it sticks. But it's a very lackluster, unimpulsive breakout. And as I always say, Breakouts that occur, um, uh, first of all, on average or below average volume, uh, you want to see ideally one and a half times or better the average volume. Uh, low volume breakouts have an increased rate of failure. Doesn't mean that's a hundred percent chance. As do breakouts that occur when the with with uh, overbought conditions and negative divergence. So you have that going about all time frames, weekly, daily, even down to this sixty minute chart here. So. Um, like I've been saying, uh, is that a sell signal? No, um, there are. I know there's certainly people short on the site right now. I still keep a, you know, I was over vacation, taking out a half my short position. I'm still holding on to the other half. There's not enough for me to to see let it ride. I also mentioned before I left town, to hedging up on a, a short on Treasury futures, you know, Z, ZB, the long bond futures, and those are actually up quite a bit more 
uh, considerably more than my sh the remaining short position is down. So that's my form of a hedge. Uh, as I mentioned on the site quite a bit recently, the reason for that's twofold. If the stock market continues to go up, you're going to see the flight to safety bid of treasuries come out. And I made a very solid case. I did an extensive video today on, on bonds. So if you're a member of the site, that's premium content. Check it out. Corporates, treasuries, uh, I think very compelling stuff there on, on, on bonds right now. In fact, a lot more compelling than what I'm seeing here. But uh, all right, so that's it. Uh, as far as levels to watch, um, the that breakout level it's again it's not a hard line on this chart i show it as a 191.28 but again you can see these previous highs multiple highs there where we failed it came up again we broke out and this is a 60 minute chart so you have this little island cluster potential island top if we gap down only potential you take a gap down below that island of candlesticks there and at least on a 60 minute chart that would be an island cluster on the daily chart yeah we still have the potential for an island cluster an island top is when you have a gap up after an extended uptrend and then you gap down leaving uh, that candles that sole candlestick is an island whereas an island cluster is two or more candles uh, separated by a gap on both sides so again something potential to watch out for and uh, they're pretty reliable topping patterns and, and what would happen if we got one soon it wouldn't just be an island cluster reversal top it would also be a failed breakout because it would take us back down below that level uh, and uh, as I mentioned today I believe on the site what you really want to see uh, I say this often when a stock or an index breaks out to all-time highs it is not unusual in fact it's more than common to see a breakout the level get back tested and even then you usually come down below there that's been my experience a perfect back test would be a kiss of that 190 ish level followed by a reversal but what tends to happen on stocks in the markets they come back in they do that to run the stops and, and shake out a few people that might you know get scared you know thinking it's a failed breakout so all I'm trying to say is in my book it's perfectly normal and healthy to come back in a little below the breakout point and still make uh, what I call a successful back test overshoot it a little bit uh, but what I can see here again is a, a pretty pretty solid uh, cluster of candles right there uh, with a gap down below so anything much more than a move back below there probably backfill that gap and uh, if we do reverse that way let's look at the nature of that reversal is it impulsive is there some are there some big red candles maybe a bearish engulfing other than that right now the trend is up and like I said no sell signals no reason to fight it or add shorts here right now you can certainly speculate take a you know an aggressive shot sometimes I'll do that but uh, like I said I think better fish to fry in some of the other uh, you know sectors commodities uh, other asset classes bonds uh, you know ag commodities uh, and things like that okay and now just uh, let's wrap up with the index charts there's this was from this morning the uh, charts I'm watching today on the site this was the ES I uh, mentioned here's some ch new uptrend lines I've added I'll get to these in a second ES didn't do much so there's not a lot of change there I posted NQ this uptrend line which we did hit and this one was pretty significant support and that's exactly where NQ came back to so um, it was no surprise at all that we stopped where we did today you can see I, I drew again this morning an uptrend line a minor uptrend line as well as that key uh, 7907 level that's that same breakout level I showed you on QQQ a minute ago you can't see there's some reactions to the left of the chart on NQ so very significant or solid because it's intersecting uptrend line and um, uh, price support level and this morning I said it would help to have one more reaction there a reaction is a pause or bounce um, or consolidation and that's exactly what we had in fact here I'll get to the, I'll get to that chart in just one second I'll show you one more RTY I said small caps they've been trading erratic lately so you know take any breakout with a grain of salt they just can't seem to make up their mind to put the well Powell's dovishness if it's going to help them as much as a large caps or not but I said you know upside break uh, you want to respect that be bullish take us up to 50 1582 ish downside break would be bearish 1551 and change almost 1552 and we'll get to that chart in a second in fact let's roll into the futures charts NQ there it is there's that level I showed you uh, we'll zoom in a little tighter 
almost a perfect tag. You can see we came down to that uptrend line and that 7907 level and stopped cold there today. We traded around it and parked right on it. So that's a pullback. That's a back test of the breakout and it sets a smaller wedge. But the bigger picture is uh, the reason that, uh, you know, we're normally I might go long on a breakout and a back test. I have no desire to go long. I'm going to stick with, you know, small uh, short position now, swing short position, which I could add to if and when it breaks down, especially impulsively. I want to see that SPY trend line break down, ES or uh, ES trend line, which we'll get to here in a second. So uh, that's it. And uh, you can see there's that comparable level. I showed you the gap on QQQ on the 60 minute chart a minute ago. There's your level there. So that's a, that's a big old gap in a support zone. Uh, so these are the things you want to watch if the market reverses. If it doesn't reverse, this is all moot, but you want to watch that level. If that level gets taken out, that's bearish, and you can see my additional levels. If and as each of these levels get taken out, that increases the chance that this was a failed breakout. I will tell you, if we get down that low, this is certainly a failed breakout that we had uh, uh, yesterday. So those are the levels I'm watching, and right now not really any actionable you know, uh, there's not any sell signals or anything else. The trend is up uh, unless we start to get some evidence there. ES, there's the trend line I showed you on ES. So that's still, we're comfortably above it right now. A little room to go. Uh, but we still have the divergences in place, like I mentioned. And then RTY, small caps, did break down, did run down right about that 1552 ish level hair above it today and closed on a back test. That's that same triangle pattern I showed this morning. So uh, that puts the small caps in a you know bearish precarious position, but uh, they're only going to go so far without the large caps breaking down. So uh, should the large caps move down tomorrow, uh, then you probably this back test uh, will probably take. Uh, RTY the small cap futures down to the next target possibly the target after that right there okay I I think that's about it like I said there's not a whole lot you know anything big that happened today um, and if the you know if it's more of the same tomorrow I may or may not do an update at the end of the day you know on the public YouTube channel members I'm always in the trading room and uh, also just finished a video that just was uploaded to uh, show you how to go through there and, and find some of the things you're looking for because 90% of the trade ideas and commentary that I post are within the trading room and uh, I went through there today and, and highlighted some of those things for the uh, silver members uh, and that video will come out uh, probably right before this one since it just finished uploading. Okay, we'll wrap it up here and pick it up uh, either tomorrow or for the YouTubers the next day if we don't see anything happen tomorrow. We are now officially in the summer doldrums, but don't become complacent because, as you know, this market in recent months and over the past year now, the trend has been pretty strong rips up, followed by pretty strong reversals down. Uh, so anything is possible. Uh, just you know, keep one eye on the market, uh, and uh, if anything big happens, I'll be sure to uh, let you know. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.